Good morning. Welcome to St. Simon's Christian Renewal live broadcast today coming to you in Facebook, tomorrow YouTube and Vimeo. We're so thankful that you're joining with us today as we honor the Lord Jesus Christ, as we encourage one another, as we stand together during this different time. But you know what? Jesus is still Lord. He is still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We come together today to worship Him. We miss you not being here in the sanctuary here on St. Simon's with us, but we thank you that you're here with us today the way that we can worship God and draw attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. God bless you today. We welcome those even who are out of town that are maybe part of our fellowship of churches that we talked to during the week and yesterday they're not holding services. They're joining us today. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Our church family, we're not able to be face-to-face today, but you know what? We will one day soon. But in the meantime, thank you for joining with us today in family. And those who are watching anywhere else, welcome today. We pray that you are blessed, that you're encouraged, that God is there with you to give you peace through this time. So I want us to pray together. I want to ask uh, Wendy and Elder Denny and Austin to lead us in a time of worship this morning. We'll have a time of prayer. We'll have a time of uh, receiving tithes and offerings as we give back to the Lord today. Have a time of the Word to encourage you, and then we'll pray. So let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful, perfect day that you have created. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us where two or three are gathered. And Lord, we are gathered and we're gathered in your name. So Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for our our leaders and our staff and, and elders and wives being here today, Father, and Crystal being here with me. We thank you, Lord, for those who are with us today to help make this happen, Lord, from St. Simon's. Lord, most of all, we thank you, Father, that you're here to encourage us today by your word and by your spirit, through worship, through the word. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. God, bless this time that we have together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you worship. recognized who he really was. They ended up turning from him because they couldn't see the cross. But we see the cross. So this morning I want us to sing about the only king forever.
the cross. And as we come into this holy week, let us be remembered of, let's be reminded of the wonderful cross.
Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, Father, we come to you this morning, God, and we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fear, God. These are times that are uncertain and they're just times that we've never experienced before, God. But I thank you for your word where you say for us to fear not that you are with us, God. We just surrender to you today, Father. We just submit everything to you today, God. All of our anxieties, Lord, all of our concerns, Lord, we just give them to you this morning. And Father, I ask that you just touch our church family, God, as they're in their individual homes this morning. God, I pray that you'll just make yourself real to them, Lord. I pray that you'll just be their comfort, Lord, and give peace, Lord. God, we lift up Mike Malaban, Ann Johnson, Sherry Buckley, Ellen McBride, Ariel O'Connor, Cleo Dickerson. God, we lift up the Kilpatrick family. God, we ask that you bring healing to these bodies, God. We need miracles in these bodies, Lord. And Father, we just bring them to you, God, and we just surrender their healing to you, God. We receive their healing, Lord. And God, anything that's on our hearts this morning that we've not expressed to anyone, Lord, you know what's on our hearts. So God, I pray that you'll just meet those needs as well. And Father, as Pastor Mike comes to bring the word that you put on his heart, God, I pray that you'll just let a mighty anointing fall on him. God, I pray that you'll let that same anointing fall on each one of us, God, the ones that are watching, Lord, the ones that are, the few that are here today, God. I thank you that your anointing is so real that it reaches everyone at the same time, no matter where we are. And Father, we just worship your holy name and we praise you. In your name I pray. like to wish everyone that's watching a wonderful Palm Sunday. Uh, this is the day that Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the crowd were declaring, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Now, we can celebrate today, but we all know that Jesus had a battle in front of him. And we have a battle in front of us. We find ourselves today in some difficult times, unprecedented times. But you know what? Jesus is still king. And even in the midst of this chaos, I believe that we have an opportunity as the church and as the people of God to be a light in this darkness. I believe that this is a divinely appointed time for the church to shine like never before. So I ask, what can we do? Well, I think first we need to examine our hearts by the word of God to make sure that we're ready for this battle. You know, next we need to intercede and pray. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus and be ready. We need to speak encouragement to people around us. And we need to be obedient in our tithes and offerings. First, to honor God. But you know what? Worshiping God is giving. It's a form of worship. Second, we need to be a blessing to those in the community and make a difference at this time especially. God's faithful. In his goodness, he has promised to bless us and protect us. And he will not fail. We have several ways that you can give. You can download our app at St. Simon's Christian Renewal. You can give online at ChristianRenewalSSI.org. You can use the secure SMS text at 912-307-3538. Or you can mail your check to 6530 Frederica Road, St. Simon's Island, Georgia, 31522. Let us pray. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your constant faithfulness in our lives. Father, we ask for healing for everyone who is suffering today. And we ask you to strengthen everyone and protect all the caregivers. Lord, everything that we have is a gift from you. As we give these tithes and offerings, we ask you to use them, Lord, for your glory and for your name and for your everlasting kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Deborah. Deborah Walker is one of the members of our finance committee. I thank her for being here with us today. God bless you, each one. Pray that you've been blessed already by the wonderful, awesome worship. I want to share a word with you today. Today is Palm Sunday, and as we approach the celebration of the greatest day in history, as we know as Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday, we should be reminded of the path that Jesus walked, the path that Jesus took to the cross. He gave us a promise. Jesus gave us a promise as he hung on the cross, as he died, as he was buried on the third day, resurrected today, he lives we have life today because of what Jesus has done and what work he has completed. But I want us to look at the few days prior to Jesus hanging on that cross. What path did he take to the promise that we experience, to the blessing that we experience today? John 12, 13 says, And they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, speaking of Jesus, and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. These people didn't realize or didn't even see, but Jesus was facing struggles. He came to do the will of his Father, but Jesus still struggled. He, he went through pain. He went through agony in the days and even years leading up to what he knew would be him laying down his life for us. I think about the pains that my wife Crystal had as she was burying Jordan, our daughter, 29, and Josh, our son, 33 years old. The nine months prior to their birth, the changes that went through her body. Now our daughter Jordan giving birth to our uh, fourth grandchild, her second child. She and Tim's second child. And, and Kendra, our daughter-in-law, the pains that she went through for Silas and Zelda, our two first grandchildren. The pains that a mother goes through the nine months preceding, the changes in her life, emotion changes, psychological changes, all the things to give birth to this beautiful child. This is only a, a taste, a small taste of what Jesus went through in the years and the days and the moments leading up to his death on the cross. Jesus lived a life path of struggles. We see the victory, we enjoy the victory, but many times we don't see the price that he paid, the, the, the times that, that he struggled, that he spent time, as I talked about last Sunday, with his father, knowing his father, knowing the will of his father, to do the will of his father. And so Jesus paid a price, he went through a path, went through a season of, of agony, if you will, to bring about the great promise that we see today. Now I realize I'm certainly not demeaning the, the pain that you're experiencing today, the agony that you're experiencing today, the struggles or challenges that, that we all are facing, the changes that we face today that we've never ever, ever experienced before in our life in the history. But we should also be aware of the pains and the struggles and the challenges that Jesus also faced because he loves you. And he's given you a promise. The Bible, the Bible says that several days before leading up to Jesus' crucifixion that Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. That was a wonderful time. The people were shouting Hosanna because they, they knew that the Christ, the King, was about to enter. And it says in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 38, when he, Jesus, had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. He was walking with his disciples up to Jerusalem, and it came to pass in Luke 19, 29, and when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, Mount of Olives, as we know it, overlooks Jerusalem, and Jesus was able to see the villages as he was coming to just ahead. So Jesus and the disciples were getting closer to the villages, and we continue, it says, he sent two of his disciples, saying, go into the village opposite you where as you enter you will find a colt tied and on which no one has ever sat it's interesting that Jesus knew the details of what was ahead Jesus knew the fine details not only the details but even the reaction of the people that were there in that moment 
before they were to get there, before the disciples would get there, he spoke to the disciples and told them what they would be facing ahead. To go get this colt tied on which no one ever sat, loose it, and bring it here. Verse 31 says, and if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Why are you taking my colt? If they ask you that, thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent, the disciples who were sent their way and found it, just as Jesus had said them, said to them, but as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, Lord, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought, the disciples brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, as Jesus went, many spread their clothes on the road. Another interpretation of the word says that people laid palm branches on the road before Jesus. In verse 37 it says, Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. A celebration, a time of, of triumph as Jesus was entering this day into Jerusalem. And so these people were expected to be free of the Romans, but Jesus was there to give them a promise even greater, and that is to forgive them and to set them free of all their sins. That includes us. What an amazing day. What an amazing celebration time to see Jesus coming into town, riding this donkey. But the path that Jesus had survived upon the arrival into Jerusalem, what struggles that he experienced to get to the place to where he was this day over 2,000 years ago. Why are difficult paths required? Why did Jesus have to go through such difficult times? Why are you, why, why are we going through difficult times? Why can't Jesus just deliver the promise already? Why? I know all of us as humans, we want the quickest easiest, most efficient, less painful way. I agree. But there is a path to the promise. Just as Jesus delivered the promise, and that promise is still valid today, we talked about last Sunday, he keeps his word, he will always keep his word, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He also faced struggles and challenges. And he was on this path, as we saw this celebration of this Triumphant entry, the word says, but Jesus also went through pain and agony. Why are God's promises always after the difficulties? Why can't the promises be received before to give us a little more excitement about going into the struggle that we've already received the promise? We've already got the answer. Thank God. Now let's go into the struggle. But it's always on the other side. Here we are. Jesus rode a donkey to deliver his promise. If we're not careful, we focus more on the donkey than on the promise. If we're not careful, we, we, face, we look more at the struggle, the season of struggle, than we do God's answer on the way. If we're not careful, our visitation with Jesus is going aside because our focus is on the problem and not Jesus being our solution. Could Jesus possibly use anything to bless his people? Could he possibly use this virus to bless his people? Could he possibly use a donkey? Could he possibly use the death of his son, Jesus Christ, to bless people? God used the donkey to lead to his promise. God can use anything, anything, any situation, your current situation, to bring about the greatest day in your life. Could it be that something is greater on the other side of your struggle? Could it be that your greatest days are ahead? Could it be that the, the days that you've prayed for, a season of, of freedom, a season of excitement, a season of Jesus triumphant entering in your life, could it be that we're days or, or, or maybe possibly weeks away from that greatest day in your entire life? Could it be that it's just on the horizon? It could be that Jesus could use struggles. He could use difficulties. He could use weaknesses. He could use mistakes. He could use frustrations. He can use imperfections. 
He can use anything in our lives to bring about and to deliver his promise. His promise has already been paid for. But we've got to receive it. We've got to believe it. We've got to know it. So I want to give you three things in these next few moments that we have together that we can prepare ourselves for what Jesus desires to do. There's something greater that Jesus desires to do. There's always a promise after a struggle. What are our eyes set on today? The first thing I want to talk about is to be ready. To be ready. Be ready how? To be ready, Lord Jesus, I don't understand it. I don't have the details. I don't know when the answer is coming, but I'm ready to do what you ask of me to do. To be ready. I think of the disciples as they were standing there that day. How many times before had they gone into a town, loosened a donkey, and taken it that it didn't belong to them? Had they had an experience with this before? I don't, I don't think so. So, so they, they had no experience in this, and Jesus simply asked them, go into town, get this donkey that no one has ever sat on, bring it to me, and if anybody asks you, tell him that the Lord needs the donkey. Can you imagine if we had been standing there that day, we possibly would have asked more details? But they were ready. They were ready up to that moment. They didn't get ready then. They didn't say, oh, my Lord, let me pray about this. But they were already ready. They were so ready. They loved Jesus so much. They trusted Jesus so much that they were ready that whatever he asked of them, they were ready to do. Let me say, you may not feel ready today. You may feel like, I, I need a time of preparation. If I'm asked to do something like that uh, by Jesus, I, I need time to get ready for that. Well, sometimes we think we are, but you know what? Our time of ready, our time of being ready is right now, today. Today, we've got to be ready. We've got to prepare ourselves for whatever. Did you know that if Jesus asks you to do something, there's got to be a huge blessing on the other side? He may ask you to do something that you're not comfortable with. He may ask you to do something or us to do something that we've never done before. That's just like Jesus to do that. He's always trying to break us out of our comfort zone for us to be ready. For us to be ready. We've got to establish our heart to be ready. Establish our heart on God and say, God, I'm ready for anything you ask me to do. I trust you that whatever you ask, there's a reason and there's a blessing through that. Matthew 24, 44 says, therefore you also be ready. Maybe you should underline those two words. You should also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Yes, the second coming of Jesus Christ is certain. Jesus Christ is coming again. But you know what? There's something that Jesus wants to do through you and in you now before that second coming. That's why we're here. There's something more that he desires to do through you even before he comes back. So, you, so we could say that this scripture aligns with he's coming in an hour we do not expect. But also today I believe that he's coming to us in a time that we do not expect. He's going to ask something of us that we don't expect or we think we're not prepared for. But we can be prepared for anything. Being ready is a decision that we make and an action that only I can do. I can't make you ready. You can't make me ready. We can encourage each other, which is what we're doing today. We can call each other and pray for each other. As Deborah said a while ago, we, we can be there for one another. And we need to do that. We need to assemble ourselves, even if it is through the internet, assemble ourselves to encourage and pray for one another. But I must make the decision that, God, I'm going to be ready. You must make the decision. You will be ready to move when he says move, to speak when he says speak. Whatever that donkey looks like in your life, that you can be ready to do that thing and watch God bless you. It may be that you're saying, well, Mike, I've been ready for years and nothing has ever happened. I feel like I've been ready. I've been on, on, the, on the line. Did you know that God doesn't waste one single second of your life? That every second that you think is wasted, every second that you think you're spinning your wheels, everything that, every second that you think you're taking two steps forward and three steps back, did you know that God is still working in that thing? Maybe you're saying, well, I've been ready and God still hasn't come through for me. I, I would say this to you, be ready. Be ready. So when that time comes, when that call comes, God is still doing something in that season of waiting. God is still, you know, I, I like to use the illustration of the farmer when he plants a seed in the ground. He has faith that that seed will produce fruit at some point. But there's a lot that goes on underneath the surface before we see the product above the surface. Does the root system be developed 
out of that seed before we see the fruit come up with our own physical eyes. So have, have faith in God that he's doing something in your life far beyond what you can see. Be ready. Be ready. The plan of Jesus will come about in his perfect timing. In his perfect timing. First, First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Those are encouraging words today. We've got to be on alert status. Not fearful. Not fearful. Afraid. To be alert. Eyes open, ears open, our heart prepared, be ready to be bold, to be strong. And the key to that is communication with Jesus. Prayer, praying. Now's a great time to be praying. Now's a great time to be reading the word more than we ever have before. It's through the prayer, it's through, through spending time with him that we can be ready. The second way we can prepare ourselves for what Jesus wants to do in this time is to be willing, to be willing, to be prepared, but to be willing when that call. To be willing to step out when he says to step out. Chris and Liza said a while ago we have two children grown and they're, they have their careers and, and lives and God is using them and children, raising children of their own. But when, when they were small, when we gave them instruction, we could always, we could always uh, know how they received that by their response. We do whether they were willing or not. When we gave instruction and their attitude, their response to that, let us know whether they were willing or not willing. Whether they were excited to follow through or whether they would rather not talk today. So God can, ta- can, can tell us much more than we can even our own children whether we're, whether we're willing or not by our response to Him. What is our response to Him? Are we willing? Well, well Lord, if you would tweak that plan just a little bit, if you would change that and maybe send me down there to the village to someone that I know, then I could speak to Him and have Him go and tie the donkey. Could we do it that way? Sometimes we want to tweak God's plan to where it makes us a little more comfortable, don't we? But we've got to be willing to do whatever he says do, however he says do it. There's something about being willing that God knows sometimes that he'll, he'll test us to see how willing we are. We saw that in the life of Abraham. When he was there to, to take the life of his son, Jesus, God was there testing him to see his willingness to follow through on the obedience of God. Your response will always speak of how willing you are. Let me say that again. Your response to God will always speak of how willing you are. I heard someone say the other day, don't hear what they say, but watch what they do. The disciples' hearts were willing to do whatever Jesus told them to do. Sometimes we can be a little bullheaded and, and say, well, Lord, if you ask nicely, I'll consider it. If you tell me to do it, then it's out. Game's off. But a willing heart, when we trust God, when we have faith in God, we will do whatever he asks and tells us to do. The disciples didn't ask questions. Jesus gave the instruction and they followed through. They didn't make excuses. Their response showed their willing heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 11 and 12 says, But now you also must complete the doing of it. That's the response. Complete the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may, may be a completion of what you have. See, there, there's always a desire to, to, to do better. There's always a desire to to accomplish this thing, whatever this thing is. There's a desire to do it, but what about the doing of it to bring about the completion of it? Verse 12 goes on to say, for if there is first a willing mind, see our mind is, is a product of our heart, whatever our heart desires, whatever our mind desires, if there's first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. What do you have? You have abilities, you have talents, you have, you have things that maybe are unique to even others, special abilities that are God-given. You can use those things. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, all things can be done through Christ who gives you the strength, gives us the strength. We can do all things. There's no limitations. There's no side note that says except for 
We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Be willing. I believe we can have an excitement to when God gives instruction to adventure. Did you know that God is adventurous? He, God is very adventurous. You, you, I mean, I don't know when the last time I saw a burning bush. I mean, he's very creative. He's adventurous. And I believe that we can, we can live life to the level of excitement just waiting for God to give us some wild instruction. Some wild miracle. To see somebody raised from the dead. That's pretty creative. To see a limb grow, grow back in a place. To, to see an ear put back on somebody's head. That's pretty adventurous. What was the attitude of the disciples during all this time? All right, disciples, go get that donkey and bring him here. Yes, Jesus, what does that address? You saw an excitement. They, they were gone. They were out. They were gone. But what if they had said, well, why do I have to do that? What? Why can't you get somebody else to do that? I'm standing here with you. I'm making sure you have some ham sandwiches. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Making excuses. What if they don't like me? What if they condemn me? What if they reject me? What if, what if? 2 Corinthians 8, 12, we just read, for if there is first a willing mind. And then lastly, to prepare for what Jesus desires to do is to be available. To be available. Don't be too busy for God. Don't be too busy for God to think that our schedule is a little more important than God's schedule. God, if, if, you, if you would just ask me next Saturday, this Saturday, I'm busy. Sometimes we get too busy for God. Well, you know what? If God's not accomplishing anything else right now, it's to get a streamline back to really what matters. Really get our focus on what matters. What really matters is where's Jesus in my life? Where are my priorities in life? Well, it should be on those things that will outlast me. Those things that will go into eternity. Those are the things that are most important. Other things will pass away. Other things will dissolve. Other things will go and rust. And But what's here? Who is Jesus to me? What is my priority? That's what will live on through eternity. Jesus isn't looking for impressive talents. You say, well... I, I would do that if, if, I, if I had my four-year degree. I would do that if I were better at it. He's not looking for somebody impressive. He's not looking for somebody polished. He's looking for somebody who is willing and available. If he wanted to impress someone, he wouldn't have used a donkey that day into Jerusalem. He would have got a Clydesdale. He would have had a fancy saddle. He's not looking for impressive but he's looking for us to be ready, to be willing, and to be available. There's a path before you today. There's a path before each one of us today. It's a path that we have never gone on before. Today is a day that we face that we've never faced in our life. You know what? Tomorrow will be another one, Lord willing, that we'll face a day that we've never faced. How will we face it? Will we face it by making excuses, trying to back away from it, or will we put our arms around Jesus and say, Lord, I, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what's going to come out of this. I don't know what the details will be. I don't have the plan, but I trust you that you do. Today I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm available. That should be a prayer that we pray every single day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That way we, we focus our actions, we focus our heart and our mind on what Jesus wants to do in our life. Isaiah 1 and 19, it says, If you are willing and obedient, that means to follow through. Here's the promise of that verse. You shall eat the good of the land. That means you will prosper. You will do well. Your willingness and obedience, your following through, your being available, ready, willing, and available, will be, be rewarded by God in your life. Jesus will fulfill his promise, even if he has to ride a donkey into town. Do you feel like it's too late? Do you feel like you have passed the season? you feel like you've made a mistake today? you feel like that everything you've done in your past is, is, is going to control your future? Well, let me say that the promise of Jesus Christ, part of what he paid for that day, was to eliminate your past in a way that he can use those things for good. Eliminate the sting, the bad, the, the ugly from that thing, and use it to turn around that will prepare you to do what he's called you to do. It's never too late. If you're breathing today, it's not too late. Do you feel like you're irrelevant? Do you feel like you're not important? Do you feel like everybody else is doing this thing that, that maybe you wanted to do? There's a plan for your life. There's a plan. There's a promise that Jesus has paid for 
and is giving you today. Job 36, 11 says this, If they obey and serve him, speaking of God, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That's much more than monetary. As I said, the monetary things want to pass away. It's much deeper than that. It speaks of a peace within us that money can never buy. It speaks of a peace and a comfort and a confidence in God that things can never bring about. God wants you to prosper in those ways, but he's got to come first. He's got to be the priority. He's got to be what comes before anything else in our life. And by doing that, by obeying and by serving him, the Bible says there'll be days of prosperity and there'll be years in pleasure. Jesus wants you to experience, to experience his great promise. His great promise is to give you life today, to give you abundant life now and in the life to come. In closing, I was sent this story from a dear friend. And it's a story of Alexander the Great. It says that on Alexander the Great's deathbed, he summoned his army generals and told them his three ultimate wishes. The first one was the best doctors should carry his coffin. The second wish was that the wealth that he had accumulated, money, gold, and precious stones, should be scattered along the procession to the cemetery. The last request was that his hands should be let loose so they hang outside of the coffin for all to see. One of his generals, who was surprised by these unusual requests, asked Alexander to explain what he was talking about. And here's what Alexander, here's what Alexander the Great had to say. I want the best doctors to carry my coffin to demonstrate that in the face of death, even the best doctors in the world have no power to heal. I want the road to be covered with my treasures so that everybody sees that material wealth acquired on earth will stay on earth. And I want my hands to swing in the wind so that people understand that we come to this world empty-handed and we leave this world empty-handed after the most precious treasure of all is exalted, exhausted, and that is our time. Our time pursuing God. Our time giving to God what really matters. He asked for our heart. He asked for our life. And so as we, as we continue, we don't know how many days this will be in these unprecedented times. We don't know how long this will last. We don't know how long we'll maintain six feet between us. We don't know how long we can't touch and talk to each other the way that we're used to. But I want to encourage you today that your time is spent pursuing Jesus. That your time is spent pursuing the only thing that matters in this life. Yes, all the other things are great. We enjoy one another. We enjoy all the things that we do together. But I want to encourage you to now focus your time and your attention on Jesus Christ. And lastly, I'm reminded of a song as I was sitting and praying yesterday. Reminded of a song that we used to sing many, many years ago. And the name of that song was Only Jesus Can Satisfy Your Soul. The words were written by Lanny Wolf. The first verse says, The world will try to satisfy that longing in your soul. You may search the wide, the wide world over, but you'll be just as before. You'll never find true satisfaction until you found the Lord, for only Jesus can satisfy your soul. The Course says, Only Jesus can satisfy your soul, and only He can change your heart and make you whole. He'll give you peace you never knew, sweet love and joy in heaven too. For only Jesus can satisfy your soul. What path are you on today? Where are you? Be encouraged. Because Jesus has the answers. He doesn't promise us that everything will be okay at six this evening. But he does promise that he will be with you and never forsake you. He promises to give you strength to face anything that you face in life. He gives you the promise of, of, of strength physically, spiritually, in every way to bless you as you focus your attention and your life on him. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Believe the promise of Jesus. He promises to help you. He promises to guide you. And he promises to bless you. I want us to pray with you today to encourage you. I'm going to ask Crystal to come.
Stand with me this morning. We believe that the Lord is by your side today. We believe the Lord is leading you. We believe the Lord is speaking to you today. We've got to have ears to listen. We've got to have ears to, to know what he's saying do. And we've got to have the wisdom and the heart to follow through with what he says. We love you today. and We're here for you. Our church, the, the doors may be locked, but the church is very much alive, very much open. We're here for you. In any, any way that you want us to help you, we want to do all that we can to help you. So let us pray with you now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our time together. We thank you, Lord, that it's by your spirit, Lord, that you draw us close to you. But God, give us the heart to follow you today. Give us the heart, the hunger, Lord, to seek you first, to follow after you in all of our ways. God, you promise us, you promise us that you'll be with us to lead us, to guide us, to protect us, and to bless us. It only comes through you, Father. So, Lord, during this time, I pray, God, that this will be a time to encourage one another to draw closer to you, that you are the answer, you're the way, you're the truth, and you're the life. And, Lord, we can't have life without you. So, Lord, I bless this time together. I pray, Lord, for each and every one who's under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you will also speak in comfort and bring peace during this time. We love you, Father. Now, I pray, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you and we're praying for you and we're here.